let us start lecture 4 in the lecture series corrosion protection methods. And today's topic will be surface character and geometry. Now, when we talk about surface character, let us say we fix a material, say uh, steel or aluminum alloys. Now, the surface can be hard, surface can be soft, surface can be smooth, surface can be rough and when we have a rough surface, that roughness can be pre-designed or it can be random. All those conditions can lead to a different degrees of corrosion and on the geometry side, what I mean by geometry is the geometry of the component. Now, that is a serious aspect, we will talk more about this geometry as well as surface character, but here it is a kind of introduction to surface character as well as geometry and subsequent corrosion aspect. And if we understand that, definitely we can think of a suitable protection method. So, when we talk about surface character, it can be hard, it can be soft. Now, if we consider hard, that can be made hard by mechanical processing it can be made hard by doing heat treatment in case of steel we can make it martensite by doing quenching operation we can make it hard chemically like carburizing or carbonitriding there could be possibility of forming coatings which can be hard extremely hard like stellite coating which could have very high oxidation or corrosion resistance. Now, these are some of the examples and in fact, we will talk more on these coatings when we talk about the corrosion protection by applying different coatings like organic coating, metallic coating, then we can have cathodic coating, anodic coating, those things will come up. Now, this is about the hard surface, then we can make a surface a textured and here textured is I am talking about physical morphology. physical morphology. A surface can be rough, okay. so it is a randomly rough, it can be randomly rough, random or it could be pre designed. Okay. So, when we are talking about textured or physical morphology, morphological change on the surface we are talking about pre design and when we talk about a roughness it can be smooth okay and that smoothness has got different variations but if we consider that it's it's basically the uh, roughness factor is very low as well as in one case roughness factor we'll talk about that that ra 
if it is very large in both the cases and if the material is exposed to the environment same environment in those two cases generally the rougher surface has got higher corrosion. Now, that is what you could see that the textured surface can have different levels of corrosion. Like let us consider the smoothness. Okay. If we talk about cavitation, okay, now you will see that the, for the cavitation this hard surface plus smooth appearance, these two are extremely important. What happens during cavitation is you have a surface on top of it, you have a bubble formation, bubble formation and that bubble formation happens if we consider let us say in water some moving object, the bubbles are forming on top of that particular moving object like impeller blade. So, what happens? So, this is basically water phase diagram. We have ice, liquid water and here it is vapor. Generally, if we consider the room temperature, let us say this is room temperature and this particular point is the equilibrium point between liquid water and vapor. Now, if the pressure line during operation drops below this, this point if we consider this point, if the water line drops below this definitely vapor would form during operation and during operation at some point of time if water again this particular pressure line goes above this then again liquid water will form that means the bubbles will collapse. So, it generally happens where entry of water happens in the pump that time the pressure drops bubble form or the vapor bubble form and that bubble collapses when the water is discharged in the pump. So, there again the pressure line goes up beyond that liquid vapor equilibrium line and then all the vapor would collapse. So, when it collapses, so that time it actually leads to high degree of pressure on top of it onto this metal surface. On this metal surface, we have a high pressure. So, it actually leads to a shock wave and that shock wave will lead to a good amount of stress and that stress can deform the surface. So, that means, if we have a deformation here, so let us say if deformation means there could be a dent formation and that dent, once that dent formation happens, then the next level of operation when the pump again that again that water is sucked in through the inlet point, point. So, there again those are the points where the dent has formed, those are the points of second level of nucleation of bubbles. And once this bubble, this dent happens, this particular zone, this particular zone becomes active zone. So, that part has the higher dissolution ability due to electrochemical dissolution of metal ion. So, that means, we have two factor, one is bubble is forming and that bubble is collapsing and that leads to stress and that stress led to leads to deformation and that deformation would lead to active zone creation and the further corrosion happens. Now, if the stress that is generated due to the bubble for bubble collapse, if that that particular surface has the ability to have a very high yield point, that means a very high hardness, the surface would not get deformed, fine. So, this is one part. And the second part is if it is smooth, then the bubble nucleation would be difficult. So, generally on a, on a, a rough surface bubble nucleation is much higher than on the smooth surface. So, that means if we have a hard surface plus smooth appearance, it is good to have good amount of cavitation resistance.
you see that just by changing the surface character, we can have good amount of cavitation resistance. So, that is what the surface character is very important. Now, if we talk about, so this is the relation between hard and smooth appearance. Now, if we talk about hard surface, another important aspect, let us say erosion corrosion. Erosion corrosion, it involves erosion or wear action plus electrochemical dissolution. which is nothing but corrosion. Now, if let us say uh, some places, let us say generally it happens in the bend portion more often, if water is flowing this way. So, this water is heating this particular end and because of this heating, this zone is susceptible to erosion corrosion damage. In fact, that particular zone more often leaks. So, the only way to one of the ways to prevent it, prevent this leakage is using some material which has a hard facing around that zone. So, then it would definitely re resist that wear action, because whenever water is coming and heating there, there will be a serious wear action, that wear action can be prevented. Now, coming to another aspect, if we talk about fretting corrosion, fretting corrosion, it the generally it happens, uh, let us say uh, the uh, fist plate for joining rails. So, that time if we have hard face there, we can have good amount of fretting corrosion resistance. Like that hard surface would always help to prevent wear and whenever wear happens that particular worn out zone has the higher susceptibility to corrode. Okay. So, that means the corrosion wear or wear corrosion that can be prevented to a great extent by using hard surface, because hard surface prevents wear or resist wear. Okay. If we take a pre designed texture like the surface that is what there are ways to prevent corrosion, uh, severe research is uh, serious research is going on there, people have been doing it by making the surface hydrophobic. So, this is a condition for preventing corrosion as well as it has other advantages like it can also have anti fouling nature or it can also have anti this uh, self cleaning tendency all those benefits can be obtained. So, hydrophobic surface. So, hydrophobic surface if we consider a natural example self cleaning surface which is the lotus effect. So, lotus effect or we call it, it happens on a lotus leaf. On a lotus leaf, what happens on the surface, the water droplet stands like this with a minimal contact and this happens when contact angle is beyond 150 degree or so. And what is contact angle? If we have a surface and if you have a water droplet, this particular angle, this angle we call it theta or contact angle and this theta should be very high and when theta becomes high, the water droplet does not wait. So, high theta less waiting 
and if water does not wet the surface that means, there is a least contact between electrolyte and the metal surface and on the lotus leaf exactly that thing happens. So, water droplet stands like a droplet and it is a it, and then when you tilt it, it just rolls without leaving any water particle on top of the lotus leaf and that way it also cleans the surface if there is any dirt or something it cleans the surface. The same effect people are trying to mimic on the metal surface. If we look at the lotus leaf microscopically, we will see that the lotus leaf has lot of peelers. Okay. So, those peelers on top of these peelers water droplet, droplet can stand like this, those peelers are holding that water droplet. Similar textured surface people are trying to generate on metal surface, so that it also the, the contact angle increases and because of the increase in contact angle, we have least very less water weighting and because the water is the electrolyte there, if the weighting is less then definitely it would have very low level of corrosion attack. Right. So, this hydrophobic surface is another way to prevent corrosion, but that time you have to actually prepare the surface and that surface preparation we will talk later. The surface preparation can be by just changing the morphology or chemically or adding some coating, there are coatings available uh, hydrophobic coating, but still uh, the major problem with this hydrophobic surface is the stability of that surface with time. Okay. So, that challenge is still there, so we have to see how it moves as the research goes on. So, that means, we are introducing lotus effect on the metal surface or the textured surface and getting hydrophobicity. And in fact, hydrophobic means its resistance to phobicity towards water, hydro is water and phobic means phobicity is nothing but the uh, uh, resisting water. There is one more another term which is hydrophilic, hydrophilic is also important. If the angle goes below around 10 degree, we call it uh, we call it to be hydrophobic, hydrophilic and hydrophilic surface is important wherever we need more of reaction. So, in corrosion protection we need less of electrochemical reactions, but in case of hydrophilic surface we need more of reaction that means, the catalyst we have to have a very high degree of weighting then only the uh, uh, then only we have good amount of reactions. So, this is another route to have a better corrosion resistance. Right. So, now we have you see we by changing the surface character we can we can change the uh, corrosion pattern. Now, if we consider the hard surfaces mechanical working by mechanical working means deformation and if we deform lot of dislocations are entrapped there and then that dislocations would have effect on hardness increase. Heat treatment means if we take a steel to austenitic zone and make it austenite and then when we quench it in oil or water or some other quenchant, we can get martensite and that martensite is a hard phase. And at times we should not keep martensite as martensite because it is a brittle phase. So, some many a times we have to temper it. So, many of those materials are basically tempered martensitic structure like uh, gears are actually tempered martensitic structures at for the big gears like the, uh, in mill used in sugar mill. Now, in railways also there are many steel components which are of tempered martensitic structures like the steel used for springs on on top of wheel if you see any train if you see there are two uh, I think uh, two or four springs. So, those springs are actually they have structure of tempered martensitic structure. Okay. So, like that way you can increase the hardness, carburizing is one 
carbon nitriding is one, where in carburizing what you do chemically we, we heat it, heat the steel in presence of carbon atmosphere. So, that carbon reacts with iron or some carbide forming element like chromium, they form carbides and those carbides are very hard carbides, the surface becomes very hard. This is also used in case of bearings okay, or gears. So, those are some of the instances where hard surfaces are made and those hard surfaces would have different corrosion character. Now, coming to the another aspect which is the geometry. Now, geometry, by geometry what we mean? Let us say, if we have a structure like this, let us say we have a tank, let us give some example. And if the tank is like this, tank is like this. And if it is a tank, that means it stores water, let us say. So, we must have inlet and outlet. So, for the design of that particular inlet outlet, we keep a small opening on top and then this is one design. So, this is inlet, this is outlet. Now, if we see this and then water line is here, let us say. An interesting part is there would be a possibility of leakage here. Because it is a sharp corner, the sharp corner has the tendency to go for cavity corrosion. And out of all forms of corrosion, crevice and pitting, they are extremely localized corrosion. And the locally the corrosion happens and then the corrosion point will go inside the material and then finally, there could be leakage in the tank. So, it happens because there is a sharp corner and crevice point is created. Crevice is nothing but a sharp corner. So, how to prevent it? we can have a design modification. That means, here that is the design part or the geometry part is coming into picture. So, the next level of modification could be instead of this a sharp corner, if we make it rounded. So, then definitely we have less amount of crevice corrosion, because the crevice point I am avoiding. So, that the next level of design part would be I can make it like this. So, this sharp corner is out, sharp corner is out. So, this is one part. Again, this is inlet, this is outlet and water line is here, let us say. The still there are problems. This is not a complete design, complete effective design to prevent corrosion. Now, from there, what will be the problem with this design? The problem is, if we use portable water, there always will be some dirts present and with time, there will be deposits here sedimented kind of deposit will form. And those deposit can also create crevice attack. So, if we zoom this part, let us say on this surface, this is a kind of, let us say this is a kind of deposit, you could see that there is a crevice. Okay. There is a crevice. And if we see the flow, the flow is on top of it and the point of deposit and the flow that way it is happening the water flow that is little far away. 
So, there will be good amount of stagnancy. So, now you have stagnancy, you have crevice and this is also open to atmosphere portable water tank. You have a cover, but you cannot prevent uh, air presence there. So, the oxygen sufficient oxygen will be there. So, the crevice would happen. Now, in order to understand crevice, please go back to our previous lecture series where crevice has been explained properly. And for the crevice condition like stagnancy is one of the important factors. If we have stagnancy crevice and you have crevice possibility of crevice attack would go up. Now, that means you have to also time to time clean off these debris which are settling at the bottom. Now, if it is a small tank you can still tilt it and then clean it out, but even if you have a small tank still you have to uh, you have to uh, have lot of efforts to clean it off, because you have to scrub it and then uh, take it out. And even if it is a if it is a large tank, it is not easy to remove those dust or the debris or the sediments deposit. So, that time you cannot tilt it, people will go inside and then clean it off. So, that means, it is a very clumsy operation and lot of downtime will be downtime will be there. So, how to resolve this again there will be modification in the design. So, design is another design can be done. So, this is my tank instead of having this outlet here we can have outlet at the bottom and the outlet pattern would be like this. If we have outlet pattern like this, water is coming like this and let us say this is water line and water is flowing out. Even if there is a chance of deposit, because the flow is like this with those flow, the small size or the lighter debris can come out through this orifice. So, the possibility of deposit would be less and again possibility of crevice attack will be less. So, that means, you could see without changing the material, somebody might think that let us use stainless steel tank, but still if it is a stainless steel tank and if we have a crevice possibility, it will be more severe okay. and we will discuss that later, why it becomes more severe if it is a stainless steel tank. But you could see that without even if it is a mild steel tank, without changing the material aspect or the processing aspect or the hard surface aspect. Let us say we I put a corrosion resistant coating, it is not needed at all. We just simply change the design, so that there is a smooth removal of those debris with the flow direction as well as as far as possible we make, we avoid the sharp corners wherever there is a possibility of sharp corners, we cut it, we, we make it rounded okay. and then those crevice power corrosion tendency can be reduced to a great extent. Okay. So, that means, this is one of the design aspects, the geometry aspect of the material. So, like that there could be several geometry aspects and there are some thumb rules. Okay. So, we will talk about those thumb rules when we talk about geometry in a greater detail. Okay. So, now one more point I just would like to mention, at times we also insert the pipe like this and that is very bad. In fact, one must cut off or chop off this particular extended protruded part, why? Again there is a crevice, you see, if we have inserted pipe into the tank and that tank connection between the pipe and the tank that is a sharp corner and that corner one cannot avoid it, it will always be there. So, that is what there is a possibility of previous attack at, that, at those points. So, any tank the pipeline should not be protruding inside the tank and that is a bad thing, that is a bad design and here geometry also comes with design. So, that means, geometry and design both come together and we will discuss more about this. Now, you could see that surface character 
whether it is a chemical character or whether it is physical character, those are important. And the second part is the geometry part or the design part. If we change the design or geometry little bit, little bit of tweaking, we can avoid some of the severe corrosion aspects or corrosion effects. We will talk more on this geometry as well as surface as we go ahead. In our next lecture, we will talk about the classifications of corrosion protection methods. Okay. So, till then let me stop here, thank you.